Hi everyone and welcome to a video about bridles. Now a bridle is a rope like this which we attach to two recovery points on a four-wheel drive here and here which are equidistant from the centre of the vehicle and we use a bridle to reduce but not halve the recovery point load on each of these recovery points and in this video I'm going to explain how that works and also how to select the appropriate length bridle for your vehicle. Now to attach the bridle to your vehicle you can use um, soft shackles or metal. You can use soft shackles provided your recovery points are suitable for them. I'm using metal here and note that I've oriented the shackle correctly so that it doesn't get side loaded there. The other point of a shackle is, sorry, of a bridle is they've generally got a sheath like this and you should use that to protect the rope at the point where you hook your strap or other rope to the bridle. So this is why it's important to use one rope as opposed to two straps. So you can see that all of the force is on a single recovery point if it's not exactly straight ahead. And obviously that's um, completely defeating the point of any form of bridle system. Whereas we take this rope here and then we've got the force distributed over two points. But remember, it's not an equal distribution unless it's dead straight ahead. So if you've got two recovery points, where can you use a, a bridle? So here's a classic example, vehicle with two recovery points, you're doing a single line pull, you've got a pull from one of them. But if you do have a bridle, then you can actually use both at the same time, and that has the advantage of not only reducing the force on those recovery points, but also, as you can see, centralising the pull. And you can also do it when you're self-winching of a double line. Basically, any point where you'd normally use one recovery point, you can normally use two with a bridle. So this is what I mean by the forces on the recovery point being equalised but not halved. Now the bridle here is 3 metres long, I've measured that, and the recovery points are 840 millimetres apart. Now that gives us an included angle, which is this angle here, of 30 degrees. Now if we assume that we're going to have a pull of 2,000 kilograms and yeah it's not the right unit of force but bear with me um, pull of 2,000 kilograms here that's the amount of force needed to get a vehicle unstuck and that's just representative if you've got a three or four ton four-wheel drive you can, that force might go up to four or five but we'll run with 2,000 for the moment now the force on each of the recovery points in the direction of pull is half that so 2,000 there and then 1,000 either one of those and that's fine but then there's also this inward force here as well, and that results in this case to 268 kilograms. And then we've got the total tension on the arms of the bridle, and in this case that's 1,035 kilograms. So you can see that there's actually a lot more stress on the recovery points than you would think, um, and it's not actually halving the load, it's just equalising it, and it is reducing it relative to the uh, main force required to recover the vehicle. So here's the same diagram again, but this time I've gone to 4,000, and again that's a representative pull if you've got a stuck four-wheel drive and you're going to do a snatch recovery on. You can see here that the inward force is now up to half a tonne inwards. So the question you've got to ask yourself is this, are your recovery points rated for that sort of inward force using a bridle or has the manufacturer only rated them for a direct inline pull? And I think you'll find that most manufacturers haven't given any consideration to use for bridle and the forces um, other than simply just the straight inline with the pull force. Now you're going to calculate the forces. Now you can do this best using trigonometry, sine, cosine, etc. But there's another way to do it, and that's simple diagramming. So here we've got our strap or our winch line or whatever else. Here we've got the bridle, and we're going to run with a 30 degree included angle, and we're going to run with 3,000 kilogram force to extract the vehicle from wherever it's stuck. Now we take half of that, 1,500 in this case, and that is the force that is going to be on the recovery point in the direction of the pull, but it's not going to be the total force. Then we take a dotted line from the end of that straight line pull and run it down so it intersects with the bridle, and that's perpendicular to the direction of pull. Then we draw a line from the recovery point to that particular dotted line we've just drawn, and the extra distance or length of this arrow here versus that is representative of the extra tensional or force. 
Then we draw another dotted line back, again parallel to the original recovery force. We draw a line down, and then that is our inward force, and that's 402 kilograms here, and then we can do the same for the bottom. Now, one thing I want to stress here is that these are minimum forces. A couple of caveats. One, this assumes a dead straight line absolutely central pull and in four-wheel driving that is never going to be the case. It's going to be slightly up, slightly down or slightly um, left or right and that will definitely affect the forces increasing it beyond what you see there. Second point um, is that the force will never ever be a precise build-up. There will be an element of shock loading um, and that will increase the force perhaps beyond what you see in this theoretical example there. And that's true even of winching. Forward driving is all about unsteady forces because you're operating with, with on unsteady ground. So it's actually quite significant to inward forces here. So to demonstrate how the forces on bridles work, I'm going to use this small scale example here. Now the principle is exactly the same for the larger scale for four-wheel drives. So we start off with this 1.5 kilogram weight. It's actually reading a bit over 1.6 because there's the weight of the zip tie here. And then that's suspended by these two straps here. And then these two scales are reading half of the 1.6 or just a bit over um, 800 grams. And I have also set the tear so that um, it doesn't take account of this strap here and then the weight of the extra scale. So exactly what you'd expect, the full weight taken by this scale and each one of these reads half. So now we've got an angle on our little bridle here and I can tell you that is about 30 degrees. And that means that this weight here at the bottom remains the same, 1.6 kilograms, but the forces here start to build up beyond exactly 50% of that weight. Now I've increased the angle even further. It's now round about the 60 degree mark and that has again same force remaining pulling it down but the forces on both of these legs are starting to build up. Now I've increased the angle even further. It's actually more like about 120 degrees now and that really has built up the forces on these two arms. And you can see there that's up to 1.6 kilograms, 1.59, and that's about 1.6 as well. So we've basically got as much force on those two arms as we have on the weight itself. Okay, so what sort of included angles should you be looking at and how do they affect the forces? Well, let's start off with a included angle of 0 to 20 degrees. So you can see here, let's just take 10 because 0 is obviously going to be um, no in included angle at all. Um, the inward force there, a, a 10 degree included angle, 131 kilos, that's really nothing to worry about. I wouldn't expect um, there to be any problem with that. But 10 degrees is quite a shallow angle. You're going to need long straps for that, maybe 6 or 7 metres. 20 degrees, um, you're looking at uh, for a 3,000 kilogram pull, 264, again you've got to allow quite a fudge factor for that, but again I'd suggest that's probably not, not, uh, not much to worry about. Then we get to 30 and 40 degrees included angles, and this is where the forces start to build up. We're talking 400 kilograms, 500 there, come to half a tonne there, and again bearing in mind that you're not going to get that exact central pull, you're not going to get um, that precise build up of forces, it's going to be a bit shock loaded, whatever you do, then we're starting to get into areas you think yeah that's quite a significant force. Once you get beyond that um, this is what I'd call the red zone so I'd call like 0 to 20 the green zone, 30 to 40 orange zone and 50 beyond yeah just don't go there. Um, you can see that you get to about uh, 170 degrees and it's 17,000 um, kilos, 17 tons. It seems incredible but that's the way it is. And 120 degrees, that's kind of the magic number because when you're at 120 degrees what happens is the total force on each, well the tension on each arm is actually equal to the total force that you're pulling in. So you can see here, for example, at 120, um, 3,000 uh, kilograms bridle tension, that's actually the same as the total re recovery force. Okay, so let's put those forces into perspective on a graph. Here we've got total force and here we've got the included angle. So we're going to start off with a 3,000 kilogram force, that's the force required to get the vehicle out of its bog situation. And we're going to halve that to 1,500 um, and that is the force on each recovery point acting in the direction of the pull and again assuming an exactly centralized straight line pull. Okay now this yellow one that is the inward force on the recovery point and you can see it starts off pretty low at sort of 15 up to 15 20 degrees included angle. Once it gets 
uh, round set of the 90 up here, it starts to get insane and actually starts to get well beyond the total force. Um, incredible, but true. And then the purple here, that is the tension in the bridle, which is how much stress there actually is on each arm of that rope. And you can see that it starts off exactly almost line ball with the um, pull force, that's the force on each recovery point in the direction of pull. But once you start getting about sort of 30, 40, it starts to build up. And at 120 degrees, that's actually the point, again, where the total bridle tension is the same as the total recovery point. So this is, Again, the green area is, is the included angle you want to look for. And the orange area is, yeah, probably can be okay. And the red zone, uh, do not use straps so short. You get an included angle of um, more than about 30 degrees. Okay, so some practical buying advice. What sort of length bridle should you be looking at? Well, the answer is that depends on your, the distance apart of your recovery points, and that may not be dependent on the width of your vehicle. So on the Forester, for example, it's a relatively small vehicle. They're 1,100 metres apart. They're not real recovery points, but they're tow points. On the Ranger, they're only 840. So it, you can't necessarily look at the size of, of your vehicle there. So here's some guidance. Assuming you want to aim for a 20 degree included angle, which is my recommendation, or possibly a 30. Now, for seven to 800 mil recovery points apart, um, you're looking for a 20 degree a 4.1 uh, metre strap, let's call it 4 metres, um, for, uh, but for if they're 800 apart that goes to 4.7, let's call that 5, that's 5 metres total length, so each arm is 2.5 metres. 30 degrees you've got 3 metres and then 3.2. Now if those points start to get wider apart, um, 900 to 1000, then uh, you're looking at 5 and nearly 4 metres there, and coming up to 6 metres for a, a metre apart there, and I've put those two in bold because that's probably the commonest type of distance you'll see on four-wheel drives, 800 to 900 mil recovery points apart. You go up to 1300 apart and then to get 20 degrees you're looking at nearly an 8 metre strap. So that should give you some idea of the length of bridle that you're looking at to get your included angle down to a reasonable figure. So let's finish off with a six point summary. Number one, which is that bridles can usefully reduce the force on a single recovery point because you can spread the load across two. But again, really important, they equalize the load. They don't halve it and they only equalize it when there's a dead central pull. Other than that, it's not equalized, although it is reduced compared to pulling on one. And you also get that benefit of a pretty central pull as opposed to pulling the vehicle offside. That said, sometimes you actually do want to pull in a specific direction. So two recovery points on the front, you've got that flexibility. Use one continuous rope or strap only. You cannot make an effective bridle out of two, as I showed you there. Um, and the reason for that is that you don't get that equalization effect when the uh, strap, when the pull is anything other than dead straight. Now the inward forces are absolutely significant once you get up to larger included angles and you should make sure that your vehicle is capable of accepting those forces and look for included angles of less than 30 degrees, preferably around 20, and that will translate to an absolute minimum length of three meters, um, preferably more like about five meters. So I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please like, share, etc. Got any questions, drop them in the comments, and thanks for watching.